Hi everyone, welcome back to the series. Today we're going to cover opening a file and then passing the data into something. So here I just have a simple text file which is just have like name, age, email address. And we have to pass this and put this into uh, into actual data. So we have this person class or person struct, name, age, email, uh, and we need to fill these, right? So first we, we call run. So we have an allocator first of all. We have the heap allocator because we need to allocate data. Then we have to open the file. So we have const file equals std.fs.cwr.openfile. I'm not sure exactly what this, I think file system is what this stands for. So it's in std.fs. Normally you could just memorize this. There is some kind of arguments I believe you can use for this. Just going to open this in VS Code just so it's easier to find. So if you come down to here to run, open file, it's this thing in fs, so std.fs. We have the self directory uh, subpath, which is just, yeah the path to the actual file. Flags, I'm not sure what flags are. File open flags. Read only, lock. Basically just ignore that um, and just put in the file. So Go back to before. <clears throat> so here you put in some some flags. I don't know. You don't really need to care about that, really. You just put in the URL. So it'd be relative to the folder you're in. Uh, so this is in the same folder. So I'm just going to say people.txt because it's in the same folder. So we need a catch because it could fail because you're opening a file. The file might not be there. It might be an error. So we have a catch just to find that, and we defer the close. So as you're opening a file, you need to close it unless you want to leave it open and, you know, just wasting wasting resources if you leave it open. All right, here we're getting the file size. So file get end position simply just tells you, I guess, in U64, how many letters, how big is the file. And then we're going to allocate const buffer is a uh, non const slice. Uh, we're going to allocate that many U8s. Then as we're allocating on the heap, we need to defer, so we need to clear it. So we open the data and we put it in U8s in, in the buffer, right? Then we read all. I guess this is like, um, so we first we allocate the buffer, then we need to fill the buffer with what's in the file. So read all will do this. And I believe, um, again, I'll do this in VS Code to find it, it's easier. So read all actually returns something. So it returns a U size. So I guess we don't care about the U size. So we just ignore it. So we do this to ignore the U size. All right, so then we have a uh, array list, a line. So I kind of had to name it um, just because I had to, like I wanted to know what it is. So this is just an array list, which is again, a dynamic array, an array that can grow in size. Because we don't know how many lines are in the file, we need to dynamically set it. We can't put it on the stack. Um, it's not a compile, compile time known value, so we don't know how many lines there are. Well, we technically do, but we might not. We might, it could be any file. It could be a hundred, could be a thousand. We don't know. Um, so we have, we make an array list and we put in the allocator and it's of const u8, so it's strings. So we're making strings. And then we defer it, so we destroy it at the end of the scope. <clears throat> and then we have this my, my own function fill lines. So what fill lines will do. Uh, so we get the length of the string. Uh, and then here's a current index. Uh, I believe the current index is just for um, Yeah, so what, what what I'm doing basically, so I'm going through each line. So imagine we have these lines, right? So I go through this line and when we find a new a new line character. We set the starting index to plus one, which would be this. So the starting index is now here. And we go to another new line, and then we, oh, if I another line, I'm going to set the next index to here. And we're just saying, so go to here, go to new line, save that string. Go to here, find a new line, save that string. That's basically what we're doing. So here we have we have the aligns array list. So we're, we're appending the lines with current index to i. So at the start, current index will be zero, so here. And then goes to new line and then we go to i so when we find a new line character it's i so we go to i and then we set current index to be here because if we set it to zero it'll be here and it will do this which we don't want this we want 
this, so we plus one each time. So this was basically just saving each line, that's all we're doing. We're saving each line, putting it in lines. So we have lines, uh, fill lines, and we, we reference it, so we're putting it in the lines, and yeah, send the buffer over, and then we create another array list of people, because we want to have... Uh, so in theory I could make an array because, but I don't know if you could actually, because it's not it's not compile time known is the problem. The problem is you could say you could in theory do the array list size, and but it's, you can't make an array because it's not compile time known. So we kind of need to do this. So we just create an array list of a person uh, using the exactly the same allocator as before. So we're using the same allocator. Uh, then we obviously we defer it because we're allocating on the heap. Um, then we have line counts, just how many items are in, how many lines are there. And then we go through each line and we have to pass it. So we pass, pass line, which is another function I made, which is relatively simple actually. I think I gave this to ChatGPT and it made the most complicated stuff I've ever seen in my life, honestly. It used like iterators and honestly, it's, it's too, too complicated. So I just made a very simple version. So if you look at the data, we have name, comma, age, comma, new line. So that's basically all we need to look for, really. So we need to find a comma, right? <clears throat> so first we uh, go constant first index, first comma index equals find first find comma index. So we set put in the string, look for a comma. And if we do, we return the index. And if we don't, then we return comma not found. Because we have a error, pass error, like this. Comma not found. So we, we find the first comma, set the index to that, and then we set the name from zero to first comma. So from zero to first comma, save the string. Uh, here I plus two, because if say for example, you find uh, this comma, you go one, two, and we want to start here, we want to start there. So we plus two to the next line, to, to the next, uh, to, to the age. <clears throat> so we plus two to the age, and then we find the second comma, and the second comma starts at an index, and then goes to that. In theory, I could have some error checking, but because we get the index from within the string, um, it's a constant string, it can't change in size, so in theory, we don't really need to have any checking to see if it's in bounds or not, because it can't really be out of bounds, unless I change the first function. So we find the second comma, so... It's like you here plus two, start here. Oh, there's a comma. Okay, and then fill this. Fill fill this string with that. So we have age as slice equals line. So so first comma plus two to second comma index. So from this from this start to the comma, fill that with the string. Then we need to pass it as an integer because it's an integer, uh, which we use try because it could return an error. And then we just fill the email to the end from the second comma plus two, because if you say here, you plus two, start here, and then fill that. And that's basically all we're doing. And then we would just return a person. So we return a person, and that's all. And we just do this in a loop. So we do this all the time. We append it to the list, and then we just print the users. Let me just run this. So if we run this, it will simply, yeah, so it's a name, John, da, 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 da. You could have spaces. It's probably a bit easier to read. I'll probably put a space, actually, just to make it easier to read in between them. <clears throat> there we go. So we have the data. We have the name, age, email, name, age, email, name, age, email. So we can save it into data. All right. So um, so to open a file, we use std.fs. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I would just save this, honestly. Um, There's kind of a long thing to write. Uh, then we have to close the file, and then we uh, do this. We... First, we see the file size, we allocate a buffer, defer the buffer, and then just read all, and then we, we have the file read. And then split into lines if you want. You don't necessarily need to split into lines, it's just easier this way, because they are separated into lines. Uh, anyway, so this is how to open a file in Zig. Um, it is a bit kind of wordy, I think. Uh, that could be a problem. In theory, what you could do is just make like uh, you know a um, a file yourself, open file, then just write this, and then just like copy this into every project you want to open a file in. So you could just see like something like open file dot, and then open, and then it will you'd call a function that does this for you because that'd be a lot easier. But 
<clears throat> with lots of things in Zig, you could just make a helper function and you don't have to remember all this every time. But it's not too difficult, really. It's just maybe a bit of a lot to remember. But let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you guys next time.